said, I know it's not your ordinary. He's a black guy with crypto. He's a black guy with crypto. He's a black guy with crypto. A black guy with crypto. Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Right here, man. So. Here's another video too, man. Ripple CEO is hopeful that the SEC case will continue, will conclude the first half. A lot of people are saying that, hey, the case is going to be done. The case is going to be done no later than the second quarter. You know, I would like to see that. I doubt it. I don't think the case is going to be done no time soon. I really don't. But let's go talk about it right now. Let's go see it. Brad Garland House, what is this? Uh, nine days ago. Hold on, let me go back. It's nine days ago. Let's see what the hell he's talking about. To some degree, a crypto winter that, I, as you just suggested, has changed in tone from how the last Davos in terms of just there was a lot of hype, uh, a lot of noise around all things crypto at the last Davos. And I think seeing the change and I actually think it's a really healthy change that there's more focus on utility. What's up, Black Richie? Hey, I think what we should aim, my opinion, we should aim for at least one trillion SHIB GF. One trillion SHIB GF is equivalent to a hundred trillion Doge GF. Doge GF is around um, three million market cap. Ship GF is less than three hundred thousand market cap. So one trillion Ship GF is just as equivalent, uh, just as equivalent as a hundred trillion Doge GF. So one trillion should be enough to be a millionaire, in my opinion, for real, for real. Let me continue. Bloody. Are these technology back, back. Has changed in tone from how the last Davos in terms of just there was a lot of hype, uh, a lot of noise around all things crypto at the last Davos. And I think seeing the change and I actually think it's a really healthy change that there's more focus on utility. Are these technologies are solving real problems? And I think to your your question, you know, I think to the extent there are companies solving real problems for real customers and get, they're going to continue to grow regardless of the environment. Is there continued contagion? I think you know, we're obviously continuing to hear noise uh, about what's going on with DCG and Gemini. Uh, hard to know. It sounds like that, that could work out in a constructive way. I think all of this has not been great for crypto at large. But again, if you just focus on companies that are solving real problems, certainly Ripple had a record 2022. We'd rather see crypto do well at large, but we had a great year, signed up more and more customers and more and more volume going through. That's that bullshit right there. I'm going to continue, but that's that bullshit. Like... We have more and more utility. We have way more partners. I'm into partners. Partnerships. That's all they say. Partnership, partnerships, partnerships. We have way more partners. We have way more this, way more that. But they keep delisting you from exchanges. People are saying, hey, they're trying to take the crypto out the market. Um, there's a high possibility that they lose this case. And what does that mean for XRP? Because if they lose the case... XRP can still exist. XRP doesn't have to have a big price for people to use it. Why? Because people are using it right now. XRP is being used right now. So the price don't even have to be that. It, like, what's the incentive of, of raising the price? Man? Let's, let's continue. We want to continue. What's going on with DCG and Gemini? Uh, hard to know. It sounds like that, that could work out in a constructive way. I think all of this has not been great for crypto at large. But again, if you just focus on companies that are solving real problems, certainly Ripple had a record 2022. We'd rather see crypto do well at large, but we had a great year, signed up more and more customers and more and more volume going through our payment rails. And in terms of your outlook for 2023, we've seen a bit of a bump for Bitcoin in the crypto markets. So you expecting that to continue or is it just a, just a little bit of false hope? Well, I, I've tried to stay out of the short-term price prediction on all things Bitcoin, if I uh, or crypto in general. I, I'm I'm long-term very bullish because I think these are technologies that can solve real problems at scale. And I think when you have kind of new emerging technologies, not exactly. dissimilar to frankly the the internet and kind of dot-com bubble, sometimes the hype gets ahead sure. of the reality that comes into balance over time. But we, we shouldn't yeah. forget, you know, really. Not that long ago, 21 years ago, Amazon during the dot com bubble almost went out of business. Okay, let me see you know, that. It, so that the fact that you're seeing some changes in the crypto world, I think, is can be healthy for the long term health of the bit of the industry. And yet, FTX appears to be a very high profile case of fraud. There are serious regulatory and auditing gaps that went on with that institution. And yet, at the same time, what I'm reading is so many people have been critical of SBF for having this close relationship with the regulators, the fact that he visited Gary Gensler so many times. So where do you draw the line? We need to strengthen regulation and oversight in this industry, 
but how close should the relationship be between your peer group and the U.S. regulators who are looking at these institutions? Yeah, you know, first of all, I think you're exactly right. I, you know, we we talk about this as a crypto problem, but really, this is just fraud. And I think, in some yeah, ways, not that dissimilar than Bernie Madoff. And when when Bernie Madoff occurred, you know, we didn't totally restructure how we thought about oversight and regulation of hedge funds. You know, we realized that hey, we, clearly in that case also, the SEC had overlooked and if people had reported to the SEC they should be looking into Bernie Madoff. So I, I know that the SEC had met a bunch of times with SBF. Uh, I don't know the specifics of what types of oversight they were applying. I, I do think this is a fraud. I don't view this as a crypto problem at large. But to your point, I think regulatory clarity globally is important. And we're seeing a lot of countries, I mean, here we are in Davos and Switzerland's clearly one of the countries leading in providing regulatory clarity at early stage. You have the UAE leaning in, the UK, Japan, right. Switzerland, sorry, Singapore. The, U- the U.S. is notably absent from that list. And I think in, in some ways the regulators in the U.S. have added confusion to the crypto marketplace. And let's talk about those regulators in the U.S., the SEC, Brad. Let's get a check in on what's going on with that lawsuit uh, with the on, SEC Brad? and Ripple. Uh, are you nearing an end potentially? Are you planning to settle with the SEC? Well, we've always said that we would love to settle, but it requires one very, very, very important thing, and that is that on a go-forward basis, it's clear that XRP is not a security. The SEC and Gary Gensler has very outwardly said he views almost all crypto as a security, and so that leaves very little space in a Venn diagram for settlement. The the case is now fully briefed in front of the judge, uh, and judges take however long the judges will take. You know, we're optimistic that this will certainly be resolved in 2023 and maybe the first half. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out from here. But I feel very good about where we are relative to the law and the facts. So you, are you going to wait for the judge to, to come out with a decision on this one? I'm very optimistic. And I think absent some significant change in posture from the SEC, I can't imagine that we won't uh, have resolution from the judge. I also will point out, and I've certainly something I've heard here in Davos repeatedly, is how important this is, not just to how Ripple it goes forward, but also really the whole crypto industry in the United States. And I keep reminding people that outside the United States, crypto is still thriving, Ripple is still thriving, and we should make sure we're continuing to engage non-US regulators as well. I mean, it's also hard, hard, difficult to say it's thriving when so many people have lost a lot of money speculating. And the key word here is speculating on the price of Bitcoin and various other cryptocurrencies. I remember Back at the peak, there was a lot of talk about institutions getting involved. Given what we've seen, given the price action, given the drawdowns, given the numerous amounts of fraud cases that have gone on in the space, doesn't it feel like the hurdle is extremely high, if not impossible now, to get institutions involved? If you were sitting on a board of a pension fund, how could you justify to them that you're going to get involved in cryptocurrencies? Well, I think it depends upon what we're, how we're defining institutional involvement. You know, uh, When I think about institutional involvement with Ripple, I'm thinking about financial institutions, banks, payment providers who are using our technologies to solve a cross-border payments problem. They've continued to engage, we've continued to grow, and so I feel good about that. Uh, but look, I think anytime you have this kind of change, you know, people take a moment. I also think, and I, I pointed out in one of the sessions I was in at Davos uh, here yesterday, is you know we talk about, obviously, crypto is down 65%. Tesla is down 65%. Facebook is down about 65%. No one's saying, hey, we shouldn't invest in Tesla or Facebook. So I think we, we have to, I mean, clearly, I, I would much rather not have the volatility we've seen in crypto in 2022. But I think we also have to look at that in concert of other kind of growth uh, investment areas. And again, to your point, most of crypto has been speculation. Yeah. If it's just speculation, I don't think that's long term sustainable. We need to focus on utility and make sure we're solving problems for customers. Damn. See, that was Brad Garland House. Now, the only thing that I do not like with focusing on utility is because if we're focusing on utility, then that means that we're in the hands of the politicians. We're in the hands of the government. Like, the government has to give us the thumbs up if we're going to make some money. I like putting my money into speculative assets. Why do I like putting money into speculative assets? I like putting money into speculative assets because... It's up to the people, it's up to the community to bring utility, to bring um, popularity to the coin, to just create its own type of narrative. So I think coins like Dogecoin, coins like just meme coins in general are at the at the most priority, in my opinion, that everybody should be investing in. Because if we're focusing on 
XRP. If we're focusing on Energy Web Token, if you don't know what Energy Web Token is, let me talk about Energy Web Token. This was a token that I was really bullish on. But as time went forward, I'm, I'm definitely going to put this in my portfolio. But at times before, I look at it and I see how dependent this token is on with corporations, with, um, with just, just, just the regulatory instance. It, it's depending on regulatory clarity. It's like if you're holding coins and buying coins only off the basis, only off the partnerships, only off the possibility of the utility coming to fruition, then that means that you're in the hands of regulatory clarity. You're in the hands of, well, um, this token has to get the AOK. -okay. This token has to get cleared. It has to be deemed not a security. So there are so many different hoops that's put in front of you when you invest in these cryptocurrencies that are utility driven. When you're focused on coins like, let's say, Gala, right? Gala is focused on utility, but the good thing about Gala is it, the utility is still on the community. The, the, the utility is on the community. Their Gala games, their Gala music, just the entire infrastructure. Like right now, you can play music. That's up to the people. You can watch movies. You can play games. So it's not like a meme coin, but it's it's accessible for the people. So it could be it could be a deflationary asset. Because you need the token to, to play the game. The token can have a burning mechanism when you play the game, when you, when you play the music. There's so much engagement that we can have to bring the price up. Because we all buy these assets and we all want our assets to go to the billions of dollars. If that's the case, then that means the token has to be scarce. It has, people have to buy the token, have to stake the token, have to hoarder the token, have to use the token. You know, in, in order to increase that volume, so more exchange, like, you know what, we can make money by um, putting Gala on an exchange because there's so much volume. So there's so many different ways to pump the price, because let's be honest here. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm here to make money, guys. I'm here to make money. I'm being completely honest with you. I'm here to turn one ETH to a thousand ETH. Okay, I'm here to turn one BNB to a thousand BNB. I am here to grow into cryptocurrency. And no, it's, it's, it's no offense to the people that's hodling. I'm just saying that tokens that are like Shiba Inu, why have Shiba Inu been so successful? It has been so successful because the entire blockchain is building, it's literally building utility it's not going it's not waiting for the regulators to say hey can you deem our token not a security can you get the regulatory clarity in the crypto space so we could actually move forward we could actually um burn tokens see they created their own tokenomics see shiba the metaverse tech trends first concept art review so they're creating their own to tokenomics they're not waiting on regulatory clarity they're not waiting on regulatory clarity at all. They're actually moving forward building. They, right now, X, XRP can lose its lawsuit, but Shiba token would still thrive. XRP, Ripple, can lose their lawsuit, and a bunch of tokens can be deemed as a security, but Shiba would still thrive. Dogecoin will still thrive. That's why these speculative assets, in my opinion, I'm very bullish on. Like they're NFTs. They have that they're already doing community burns. They have their own decks. You know, there's this, this is a fully functional blockchain. I mean, fully functional token. They have their own swap, everything, man. So I'm very bullish on. Meme coins. <laughs> I really am because I'm not at the mercy of the regulators at all. So that was that one. Let me see what else. What else I want to talk about today? It was right here. Hold on. Uh, later. I have another article too. It's saying formal rip rule director explains why XRP didn't take off like Bitcoin. Okay, tell me why, sir. 
It says the Ripple's former director of relations, he expressed his position on why XRP has not gained the same popularity in acceptance of Bitcoin after being asked by one of his followers. This is what he said. He said, based on two points, which is the first was Bitcoin had the first mover advantage. Recall that XRP was launched three years later after BTC in 2012 by David Swartz. Hamilton said at the time, 11 years ago, no one understood anything about asset tokenization and decentralized exchanges, which were available, excuse me, which were available at the XRPL. The XRP ledger was ahead of its time, the developer concluded. The second reason, according to Hamilton, is the information attacks on XRP, the first fear, uncertainty, and doubt XRP was stirred up by Bitcoin Maximus, then the financial crimes enforcement got involved. So they're basically saying Bitcoin Maxi is basically fudding XRP. And that's the reason why it's not like Bitcoin. It's not as accepted as Bitcoin at all. They said, recall that even before the SEC litigation, Ripple has been penalized by another regulatory on charges and unregistered sales of XRP, as well as a violation on conducting an anti-money laundering program. The case then ended in a settlement which Ripple Labs and XRP found it was fined $700,000. Let me read that again. They was fined $700,000 of a violation of conducting an anti-money laundering program. That's what they said. They settled. You know, they settled. Imagine if you was charged a crime that you say you didn't do, but you but you took the plea. <laughs> you took the plea, though. So it's like you're guilty. And we're not gonna, I do understand there's certain people that took the plea because they didn't want to go against the feds and get fined hard or do more time. But at the end of the day, you still took the plea. You feel me? But that's that's my um, that's my perception of XRP in general, man. These utility tokens.